Welcome to another TSE single slider. This one's all about direct charges on multiple accounts with cloning. I'll explain how to collect payment details from a customer once and use them for multiple direct charges on multiple connected accounts. Let's start on the platform where we either create or use an existing customer. We'll create a setup intent associated with this customer and when we confirm the setup intent client side, we get a payment method that's been set up for future use. When confirmed successfully, setup intents automatically attach the associated payment method to the associated customer, which allows the payment method to be reused. One quick note before we proceed. For this slide, I'm using example object IDs with sequential numbers. For example, PM underscore one, PM underscore two, and so on. Usually I use random example IDs to approximate the random IDs Stripe will generate, but using sequential IDs for this slide will make things easier to understand. Just remember, when you're actually using Stripe, the IDs generated for these objects will be random, and none of them will be sequential or related in any way. Okay, now that we have a payment method set up for future use on the platform, we can clone it to a connected account. Let's start with connected account A where we want to make our first direct charge. To clone the payment method to this account, we need to make a POST request to V1 payment methods. We set the value of the Stripe account header to the connected accounts ID, and in the body of the request, we'll specify the ID of the payment method we want to clone. And because that payment method is attached to a customer, we also need to specify the customer ID. When this API request succeeds, a new payment method object on the connected account is created. Like PM1 on the platform, this new payment method, PM2, represents the same payment information, but other than that, it's an entirely new and independent object. We can now use this cloned payment method to create a direct charge on the connected account by creating and confirming a payment intent. Note the cloned payment method on the connected account inherited the setup for future use performed by the setup intent on the platform. This means there's no need to set it up again on the connected account. One thing to keep in mind here are the countries of the platform and connected accounts. You may need to use on behalf of on the setup intent to properly set up the payment method for use with your connected accounts. For example, if your platform account is in the United States, where 3D Secure rarely or never happens, the setup performed by the setup intent will likely not prompt for 3D Secure authentication and will thus be insufficient if you want to make a direct charge on a European connected account where SCA is enforced. If you're going to create direct charges in a country that differs from your platform account, you can use on behalf of on the setup intent to specify a connected account in the same country where the charges will be made to ensure the proper setup is performed. Now let's look at a second connected account, account B. What if we also want to use the same payment method from the platform to create a direct charge on this other account? It works basically the same way, starting with the same API request to clone the payment method, with the only change being the account ID we specify in the Stripe account header. Once this API request succeeds, we have another new cloned payment method, PM3, on account B. This payment method has also inherited the setup from the platform, so we can then create a direct charge the same way. Let's imagine now that we want to create a second direct charge on account B. You might be thinking we can reuse PM3 for that, but there are two reasons that won't work. First, we're not attaching the cloned payment methods on the connected accounts to customers, which means they can only be used once, and we've already used PM3 for a direct charge. Second, even if we did attach PM3 to a customer, if some time passed between the two direct charges on account B, PM3 might be out of date. You should think of the payment method on the platform as the canonical one. If the customer wants to update their payment method on files, such as providing a new expiration date for their card, you would update the payment method on the platform with those changes. That means PM3 wouldn't be up to date for the next direct charge unless you went to the trouble of keeping track of and updating every cloned copy of PM1 manually. The best approach is to clone the canonical payment method from the platform again at the time of each transaction. This will always provide an up-to-date copy and avoid the need to manage and update reusable payment methods on various connected accounts. 
There are a few other things to note about cloning payment methods. First, it's important to understand that cloned payment methods are separate, completely independent objects with their own IDs, and they have no link back to the original payment method on the platform. There's no synchronization of any kind, so if you update the payment method on the platform, the clones you've already made are not affected. Second, only certain types of payment method objects can be cloned, such as cards and ACH debit payment methods. No other objects, like invoices or customers, can be cloned. If you want to copy an object, like a customer, to a connected account, you need to do so manually. Third, if you want to use a cloned payment method for recurring billing, such as with a subscription, you must attach it to a customer on the connected account so it can be reused. So that's direct charges on multiple accounts with cloning. Once you have a reusable payment method on your platform, you can clone it an unlimited number of times to an unlimited number of connected accounts in order to enable the direct charge workflow of your dreams.